Hi guys, it's Grant here from Collective. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a forecast using DAX and Power BI. Let's get started. So here we have a pretty simple data model. We have sales and then total sales, which is just a sum of the total revenue. And then we have our calendar table, and as you can see here, the last date of available or of actual sales is July 28th, 2017. However, we want to compare our actual sales to our forecast and we want our forecast to go to the end of the year. So December 31st, 2017. The first step to doing that is to create a new measure for sales last year. And we'll do calculate total sales and then same period last year. This will project our 2016 data into 2017. As you can see, it goes to the desired date, December 31st, 2017. However, it also includes data from 2016, which we do not want. To fix this, we're going to create a new measure and we're gonna call this 2017 forecast. What we're gonna do is calculate sales last year, and then we're going to add a filter. We're going to filter the calendar table. And we're going to filter the year to equals 2017. This will only give us our data in 2017, which is the desired result. We'll put that in the matrix. As you can see here, it's the same as sales last year. However, it stops, or uh, should I say starts, at uh, the beginning of 2017. So now that we're here, comparing daily total sales of actuals to our 2017 forecast for daily sales is not very, or is not very useful and not very insightful. To change this, we're gonna compare cumulative sales of 2017 to the cumulative forecast of 2017. That being said, we're going to create another measure. We're going to call this one cumulative sales. Here we're going to do calculate total sales. And then we're going to do filter all selected. We're doing this to ensure that we are able to use all dates as slicers. Next, we're going to do calendar date is less than or equal to the max date in the calendar. This will ensure that all of the sales are summed up. So we'll throw this in the matrix. And as you can see, it is a sum of all of the total sales. It is a running total. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing, but for a forecast. So we'll copy and paste this, make a new measure. We'll call this one cumulative forecast. And we'll change total sales to 2017 forecast. And we'll hit enter. Pull that in here. And then that is a that is a running total of the 2017 forecast. Next, we'll take these out and we'll look at this in a graph. And then we'll filter to 2017. 
And as you can see, here's our forecasted values and here are the actual values. However, you see that this value for, for, or for the actuals holds steady throughout the end of the year, which we don't want. To fix this, we're gonna go to cumulative sales and then we're gonna go if is blank total sales then blank and then else our calculation. And as you can see, that chopped off the area where it leveled off. And now we have it up into our last date of sales, July 27th or July 28th. And now you can compare your actual sales to the forecast. And then there's also something else you can do to get a better view of this. So we'll add another measure. And we'll do sales versus forecast. And we'll actually make this the difference between total sales or cumulative sales and the forecast. We'll throw this on another chart. And as you can see, this is somewhat of a mess right now. To fix this, we will do the same logic as we did for the cumulative sales. We'll do if is blank. And then return blank. And now here we, we can view the difference to forecasts at all these different intervals. And this helps you more accurately compare your actual sales to forecasted sales. And then if you wanted, you could filter this all by product as well. Thank you for your time and watching this video. And for more videos from me and the team, follow Collective on LinkedIn and YouTube. See you later.